Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. I got my buddy's uh, Firebird drag car here at the shop today. I had to do some suspension work to it. Uh, I got it all done. It was uh, too tedious to try to film. But uh, after I got it all done, I had to go and uh, do a wheel on it. I'm going to show you how to do a wheel on it at home with a piece of string. Stick around. Hey, before we get started, don't forget to uh, check out my merch line. It's uh, listed down below on the YouTube channel uh, on the bottom, or go to Teespring and Fitzy's Fabrications and uh, pick up a shirt, mug, sticker, help a guy out. I got a race car to build. <laughs> All right, before we get started, I'm going to walk through the vehicle that I'm using here as a guinea pig. Uh, this is a, I think it's a 92. I'm not quite sure. It was 90s model uh, Camaro. Of course, a Firebird. I don't even know what it is. Firebird, yes. 90s, 90s model Firebird, 95, 96, something like that, that is. See the taillights in there? Uh, this is owned by a friend of mine. Uh, a number of years ago, he rebodied this car. It was originally a 84 model Camaro. And it's a full chassis car, and I'm on you. 2x2, uh, 2x3, two by two, two by right through outer. A full roll cage. And uh, I did a pile of uh, metal work, done all the team work in it, floors, transmission tunnel, firewall, all that type of stuff. Right. Wheel tubs, all this stuff back here. Right. So I figured I'd just show you a little bit of handiwork I've been doing over the years. A little fuel cell in the back of her. This wing, um, I made this from last year. Put that on the car. As you can see, all the bracing and everything is on it. It's a neat little setup. All that was, wasn't a bot wing. I made all that off from scratch. Right. It's uh, got a 9-inch four in the back. Ladder bar, coil over car. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? It's a Turbo 350 transmission. Small block Chevy. Um... I think it's a 383, or it could be a 406. I'm not 100% sure. I dare say Jimmy will uh, point that out to me. <laughs> you look at this lovely text. Look, he hauls it on an open trailer, and if it rains, uh, neat little idea. Look. It's a shower cap. Must be his wife's. I hope she's not missing missing it. That's the real thing for uh, just in case you get caught in the rain, taking it to and from track. That'll keep the water out of the carburetor. So it's a neat idea. It's got like aluminum heads, a lot of gear done on it. It's a Mustang two front end with tubular upper and lower control arms. Uh, it's Mustang rack and pinion steering in it. That's what I had it here for, to do work on the rack. I'll explain that now in a little bit. Other than that, uh, that's basically it. Fiberglass doors, fiberglass hatch, and there's uh, all the front. I think it's fiberglass hood on it. And then it's got full uh, steel front on it with rubber nose or whatnot. I have fiberglass fenders on this, I'm not quite sure. But that's about it. I figured I'd walk you through it so you know exactly what you're looking at here. So I, after doing a few of these old drag cars over the years, and uh, I'll probably be showing more of them on the channel. Of uh, I pick and poke at these and fix them up for the boys, and eventually I want to get mine done. Anyway, let's get started on that wheel alignment. The problem we have with this car for a number of years now is the uh, wheel alignment on it. The, uh, what we come to realize is the front suspension of this car at one time was in a Ford. Uh, like around here, we've after making race cars of what we can find, and this front suspension was in a Ford at one point, and they modified it to fit the 460, uh, big black Ford, and had a front sump pan, and they dropped the rack and pinion down from where it was originally, about four inches, because for clearance issues. Then they had big spacers put over here on the sides, for you can see what I got changed here now. That was all one spacer, and that was down, and it needed to go down more. If, if, in order to eliminate bump steer on the car, right? Now, what uh, was the problem with the cars? Because of that, the car kept going out of alignment, and as you can see the wear on the tires, he was going through a set of tires season. 
So I brought it in here now. I went and relocated the rack. I raised it up four inches. I made a new cross brace and everything there. Raised it up a good four inches. And then I checked on the bump steer. And I got all that straightened away. If you look straight in parallel to the lower control arm. And I, then I made up the spacer, which is an inch and three quarters, I think, to go in there for that. So now, now I can jack this up two inches and the wheel stay straight. So I, that was one issue I had with it. Also, the rear end was not in the car straight and it was a bit crook. So I had to readjust all that, take the ladder bars out of it. Had them out two or three times. Uh, got the adjustments done on it. So the car now is preloaded over on this side. I got the rear end set up for it. It's all preloaded. So I got all that done and I got the rear end straightened in the car. So centered. So now the car is all squared off. And if you notice, it keeps noticing the string I got here. That's my wheel alignment. It's also my alignment tool. Uh, when I was when I first uh, went at the car and I put the string on it, when I put the string down the side, what I do? Let's explain this first. I got a string that goes from this one here, goes right down here, wraps around this jack, wraps around this jack, and then goes up and wraps around that jack up there. Okay. Now they're all pulled tight. Now what you do is. You have this jack in behind the back of the wheel and you touch it so that it rests on the back of the tire. Then what you do is you go up front, pull that tight and you slowly move that jack in until it just barely touches here on the front part of the tire, as you can see. So that there and that side wall and that side wall are parallel, so that's the parallel line that I'm going to go by. And I've done the same over here. As you can see, it's on an angle there. And then the string just barely touches the vent tire there. So now when you stand back and you look at it, right, you can see the way the string comes down. Now when I was doing it earlier, the rear end was crooked in the car. So I had on the distance on the rocker right here, I had more on this side than I did on the other side. So the rear end wasn't straight in the car. So I used this technique here to square it all up. After I took a few measurements inside and whatnot, this car has been like, it's not like, it wasn't just built once. It was a back half car, then the front end was done on it, then it was rebodied, and then the middle was done, changed again. And so, you know, it's been through the worn back. So it's kind of hard to measure off the car because it was made up so many times. But now that I got that done, I got the rear end square, everything straight, I'm going to do alignment on it, a wheel alignment. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the string and the rim itself. All I'm doing is I'm measuring from the rim out to the measuring tape there. And then I'll come up the front of the rim and I'll do the same thing there. And as you can see, that is towed out about a quarter of an inch. Okay. So now i got to tow that in about an eighth of an inch and then I'll repeat the process for it on the other side. All I'm doing with that is I'm loosening up the jam nut here and I'm turning the inner tie rod to bring that side in there, right? This is a little technique I've done. I've um, done it on a lot of hot rods. The problem you got is like bringing machines like this to a wheel alignment shop. A lot of guys that work in wheel alignment shops from working on modern day cars and they're not familiar with the way things are set up on an old car. And with this rear end is wider than the front and the tires are bigger on the back. Trying to square all this up. And uh, this is something you can do on your own vehicle too. It's just a quick little trick that... Um, can be done if you got any questions or comments uh leave them down below i've done this trick many a time over the years for different vehicles i found it great for the race cars because of the tire sizes on them and uh, it works out pretty good i've often done them and we brought them put wheel alignments on them and they're pretty well spot on they're pretty close like you're not going to get this perfect you're going to make it it'll get it to the point where it's very drivable but if you're looking for precise measurements on a wheel alignment well then you know but this is just an old school way of doing things and uh, it'll get you in the ballpark. Like this will be 10 times better than it ever was before. What I need to do here now is I gotta bring the front in, the front of the wheel inwards. So what I got to do is I got to shorten the uh, the bar. So that's 
So I'll do and I'll do this now a few times and check it. I want to get about an eighth of an inch toe in on the front of the wheel. And I'll play with it, I'll come back and I'll check the measurements. I got four and a half to the outside there. And four and a half to the outside there. So now the wheel's straight, I must put some toe in on it. Make sure your steering wheel is straight. That's the key to it. You can uh, forget about uh, if you're doing a decent wheel on the wheels are straight. Not worse than driving half broken down the road. of the string is about an eighth of an inch that's the reason why I like using that string uh, all I gotta do is just use my measurements inside and out the string and use the actual string as my measuring I'm a little bit off there a little small bit I gotta bring it back the other way a little tiny bit for an eighth I'll just right, just a bit try it again That's it. That's an eighth of an inch toe in on the front. Uh, you may wonder why why you have to have it towed in. A lot of that reason is because when you're driving down the road, um, a car got a tendency to want to push itself straight. So with a small bit of toe in, it'll correct itself just from the, the forward motion of the wheel. A lot of information out there on wheel alignment and stuff like that. It's just something I've been doing this for a number of years, doing it this way. And it's an old hot rod trick. I've seen a lot of old hot riders. Used to be in hot rod magazines years ago. I used to see it. I started doing it and I got the that nice little roll here that I like. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other side. So I went ahead, I got it all lined up. Uh, I got an eighth of an inch toe in here, eighth of an inch toe in there. Um, so when you measure it here, you see the measurement there, and then when you come over here, you see the measurement there, which is roughly eighth of an inch, as you can see the mark, right? It's the thickness of the, of the, uh, string itself. I got both sides done. So, you know, basically now the two front tires are, uh, I'll show you now just in simulation. Easy way to do this, put this into both hands. You got two front tires going down the road like this. Uh, what you need to do is tow them in a small bit. That's over exaggerating it because when you go down the road, the wheel got to want to push straight. So that's the reason why you tow them in. If you had them perfectly straight going down the road, they'll push themselves out. You would think that you'd have your wheels perfectly straight, but no, that's usually how you set them up is a little bit of a tow in on them, especially on drag cars, right? Because you don't want no resistance and no, nothing like that on the car itself. So that's how you uh, can use a piece of string, four jack stands, and a couple of simple tools to uh, do a wheel alignment on your vehicle. Get yourself out of a jam. It's great. it's great on a car, old cars, because I've run into issues where I've gone into wheel alignment shops with my old black Chevy and had nightmares. And I started doing this a number of years ago again. I've done this, I had a tea bucket, and this is the only way you're going to get a wheel alignment on that, was with, with doing the string thing, right? But it's an old hot rod trick, uh, simple little thing, tools you can have, something you got to line around the garage. Anyway, hope the tips were good, and until next time.
step, you know? Well, first, uh, must be known for dear. <laughs> <laughs>